Hello, I'm David Denton, and in this time lapse video, I'm going to look at the making of my latest painting, Skin the Shine of the Rain. The actual painting took about 250 hours to complete, but through the miracles of time lapse technology, I'm going to condense this down into four episodes of about five or six minutes each. The first one is all about the painting of the background of the painting. So without further ado, let's get started. Right then, so as you watch this first part, you can actually see that I'm blocking in the main areas of colour. And this happens pretty quickly, so that I can get a vague idea of what the painting's going to look like, and the different tones that I'm going to need. Now while I'm doing this, I'll just explain why it's taken me quite a long time to actually post the video. I think it's been about six months. And the reason is this. No, not the Chinese army, but it was a painting that I was doing based on that kind of idea of having an army. And obviously there were tentacles involved, but it was really, really detailed and really, really repetitive. So what I'd done is I'd drawn out the character first and scanned it into Photoshop. And then I used Photoshop to lay out lots and lots of copies of them getting gradually smaller as they went back. And I printed that out traced it onto my board and everything was going well and I'd almost got to the end and this was after about two days of tracing so pressing down really hard with your hand and I looked in and thought there's something wrong with this and I looked and one of the measurements was off slightly and one of the rows looked a little bit wrong so I'd got to do the whole thing again so it was another two days of this relentless tracing of pressing down hard with my hand and after that I noticed it hurting a little bit as it would and then it just went completely and I couldn't paint or do anything. And I'd maybe be able to do two minutes before it started really hurting and cramping up and getting pains in my arm. So whether I ever finish that painting or not, I don't know, but we'll see. I might get back to it someday. So I went on to this one, the fifth one in the series of the Seven Gates. So now we've got that explanation out of the way, let's get back to the painting and see what I'm up to. So you'll notice that I actually, when I was blocking it in, I painted the figure in there and then I've, I've obliterated it and gone over the top. The reason for that was that I painted the figure so that I could see that it was actually going to work with that sort of tone. But then the final figure I knew was going to have gaps in it and spaces between all of the, well you could call them bones. So I had to paint the sky in behind the figure so that you'd be able to see through it later on. Now. You may have noticed that sometimes I actually paint with my left hand on this and that's obviously because of the hand problem, especially with the blocking in. But um, let's now talk about how I actually paint the sky. And I'll use two brushes. I'll use quite a small brush, first of all, to just put the paint on there, to put the colour on. And then I'll use a filbert brush to just blend it in. So all the time I'm just going, changing the colour very, very slightly, a very, very slightly different tone just so that when it blends in it'll all look really smooth. The other problem with blending it in with a filbert brush, apart from making sure that you get the colours really really close together, is that you need just the right amount of moisture on the brush. So too much and it'll just obliterate it all and turn it into a wash, but too little and it, it won't do it and it'll make it look all scratchy. So you've just got to have the right amount of water on the brush to blend it properly. With these paints that I use, with the acrylics that I use, it's actually a little bit tricky because they're drying so quickly. Probably be a lot easier with oils, but that's the way I do it anyway. So once I've got a nice smooth appearance to the clouds, nicely blended, then I'll do washers over the top, just slightly different washers, reds, yellows, blues, just to modify the colors and just to get a little bit of movement and interest in there. So now I'm moving on to the skyline, which again is pretty tricky because you're dealing with tones that are so close together. And you've got to get it looking as though it's in the distance, so you make them a lot paler, a little bit bluer, so that it fades into the distance. Now you'll notice that I do a little bit on the buildings, and then I'll swap and do something else, something a lot bigger and a lot freer, just to help my hand really, and then I'll go back to the buildings later on. When I'm painting the water, the main idea is to just go from left to right. And as long as your strokes are going from left to right, as, a, as you can see there, it will eventually look like water. And I'm using the paint quite dry so that it actually shows through to some of my, so the underpainting that I've left before. Now 
Now you'll notice that from time to time I turn the picture upside down to work on it and that's because when you do turn it upside down it gives you a different perspective on it and it will show up any little problems that you've got with the composition because it's something that you're not used to looking at or another way to do it is to look at it in a mirror which is another trick that I use or the more technical one is to put it into Photoshop and then flip it and do that too which I also do and this actual flipping of the painting actually came to the major change in it which we will see later now there you'll see I've just completely obliterated some buildings that I put, put in and that was because originally they were going to be quite destroyed and dilapidated and as I was painting it I thought because of all this destruction that's going to be happening on the let's call it the rubble snake that the background needed to be a bit more sedate and a bit more peaceful and whenever I look at this painting I always think that the sound associated with it is just the atmospheric sound of the water on the river and the, and the wind and the actual sound of the destruction has gone as if those sound effects are just completely out of it so I actually think of this as quite a peaceful looking picture so I wanted to simplify the background a lot to give that feeling of space and of peace to contrast with the destruction that comes later on so you can see there I've had to add in these extra buildings and cover up those existing ones. Now I'm just going to slow this final part down. Mm, that's fancy, but at least it lets me show you how I painted the god rays. So the way that I did that with really thin washes of white and I made sure they all came from a central point in the sky. Lots of thin washes just building those up. And that's the finished look. And they add that final little bit of interest into the sky. That's all we've got time for in this video then. So I'll just leave you with a shot again of the final painting, which you can see the sky, you know, it's upside down. You can see those God rays in there on the right hand side. You'll be able to see more on how the painting develops in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've enjoyed that and you'd like to leave a comment, please do so in the box below. Or if you'd like to know more about my work, you could always visit my website. In the next instalment, we're going to be looking at the painting of the bridge and probably the best way to describe it is a rubble snake, the start of that as well. So I'll see you next time.